So gastroschisis is due to a hole uh, in the uh, abdominal wall, typically in the area of the umbilicus or the belly button, in which uh, uh, intestines uh, penetrates and is visible outside the abdominal wall when the uh, infant is born. Uh, this is not typically associated with any other anomalies. It occurs in about one to four or five thousand live births um, and is a very treatable disorder. Now, why does it occur? Well, it's thought that gastroschisis uh, results uh, due to uh, resorption of one of the veins in the belly button. There are two arteries in one vein, and it's thought when one of the veins gets resorbed, it's at that site that there's a weakness and that there can be rupture of intestines through the abdominal wall. The diagnosis of gastroschisis is typically obtained by ultrasound when the baby is within the mother in utero uh, as a prenatal diagnosis. Um, this affords uh, the mother the opportunity to discuss uh, the findings with uh, the perinatologist, the surgeon, and the neonatologist, and to plan for the delivery of their child uh, and the subsequent care. Uh, it's very important to remember that gastroschisis is not associated with other uh, congenital anomalies, and in particular, these babies are typically neurologically normal. If you have one child born with this, is there a chance you might have another child born with this? I guess it's possible, but there's not a significant increase uh, in incidence. And once it's corrected, the kid usually has a full and normal life? Correct. Um, after the baby is born, uh, typically the bowels are, are matted and stuck together and they can be somewhat swollen. Uh, what we try to do uh, is to replace the intestines within the abdomen when the child is first born. Uh, if this is possible and a primary closure is accomplished, uh, the baby will then wait for several uh, weeks until they can tolerate feeds. If, however, the intestines cannot be returned to the abdomen, a silo is placed atop the intestines so that the intestines are protected. Uh, during the next week, the swelling in the bowel typically goes down and the intestines can then be reduced to the abdomen and a secondary or delayed closure of the abdominal wall is performed. These infants can then uh, start to tolerate feeds and yet again, about two to three to four weeks. There's also a chance of, if it's a younger mother, it's, there's a slight increase? That's correct. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're going to have it if you are a younger mother? No, not at all. The incidence of this disorder is still quite low. And if there is a um, blockage, it's usually found in about 10% of the intestines? This. It's possible that they are. There can be a, what we refer to as an associated atresia in which there's a, uh, a separation of the bowel. Um, in this case, uh, we subsequently have to do a, a delayed intervention and repair the intestines, usually about two weeks after the original uh, delivery. Is there a staging in the treatment of this, like you do it in one stage or two stages? Well, typically you do it in one stage, if at all possible. If the intestines is too swollen to be returned to the abdomen, then we do it in a staged manner in which the, be the intestines is initially covered with the silo, uh, the edema is allowed to resolve, and the intestines is then gradually reduced. So it's like reduced. a motion bag or something? It's like a bag, yes, it's exactly. That protects the intestines and keeps it sterile uh, during the ensuing week. And the second stage of the second surgery is about a week to ten days later? About that. And after you do the surgery, do you actually have a lot of complications? The biggest problem is that it takes a while before the intestines can tolerate feeds. Um, and uh, we take our time and slowly advance feeds. Uh, sometimes we have to back off after initially gaining ground, but eventually uh, the child will tolerate feeds and be capable of uh, going on. If you make a diagnosis before the baby is born, it might be wise to have the kid put in a real pediatric center, which has a pediatric surgeon, neonatal unit, to just way you would have a better chance to reduce any of the complications. All right. I think the, the primary advantage of a prenatal diagnosis is the opportunity for the mother to talk to the surgeon that's going to care for her child postnatally. Uh, in addition, I think it's better if the uh, baby is born in the center where they're going to receive care, simply to reduce any potential injury to the intestines during transport of the baby from an outside institution to the center where the child will receive care.